Hello and welcome back to the White Pew Podcast. I am ZM and it's Sunday the 14th of Jan 2024. That's right, this is the first review of the year, first text of the year. Um, and we are hopefully back to like a consistent Sunday schedule. I think both Gabrielle and myself felt terrible that there were a lot of interruptions to your usual programming last year. And we want to get back to being consistent back to thinking out loud in public and you know not just for you for us as well because I think we started to feel a bit stir crazy um with the disrupted routine and all that but we are starting as we mean to go on with this review of Saltburn um because it's just a bit everywhere isn't it you know it's all over the place um it's (laughs) it's <laughs> like the discourse around this film is super loud I actually wasn't gonna even watch it I didn't feel any compelled to watch it because my first impression came from the discourse around the film which was that this was the most horrifying disgusting film like things happened in this film that were like tr- so truly horrifying and like repulsive that like it was a really difficult viewing experience um and I was kind of like why do I want to watch that? No way. No, please. No. I was like happy to not participate in that cultural moment. I was happy to skip because like, you know, who can be asked? Um, but Gabrielle is holding me at gunpoint, quite frankly, to write this review. She's too persuasive for her own good and for my own good. Um, so I, but I, I watched this at her demand, quite frankly. I'm glad I did because I do actually find myself having something to say ish kind of like I, obviously I do because I've written 1500 words about it but um I kind of I find the loud noisiness of the discourse and my kind of oh that was really not that weird kind of normal like that reaction I find that really interesting like that clash I f- like there's always something to write in the gap between those two things um So, yeah, it's in the culture. We're doing some clickbait. Well, it's not like clickbait, clickbait, because this is actually a proper review. You know, this is like, this is a review, but like, it's, yeah, trending terms and all that. Um, It's just kind of, this film is very in the culture, not just with like the grabby, flashy press that the actors do, like the interviews post-film when it comes out, but like, you know... Um, there have been TikTok trends coming out of this. Sophie Ellis Baxter's song "Murder on the Dance Floor" charted over the New Year, like New Year's Eve period. Um, it charted higher than it did when it first came out because it was in the end scene of this film. Everyone's talking about this. So many think pieces. So many think pieces. And I don't know. <laughs> the way I'm marketing this text is as not another salt burn think piece. It may very well actually be a think piece, um, but. I don't know. It's interesting. I'll just get straight into reading the text rather than give you the too long didn't read. But um, I'm going to read the text and then I'll come back to you with the emoji to comment on the Instagram. And then we can all go about our Sundays and have a lovely time. Um, So, yeah. Even though this film fizzled on contact with my eyeballs, the heat and mess disappeared after a couple of days. This just adds to the mystery for me. The discourse around this film is so loud. Someone somewhere must genuinely find this film personally, professionally or politically horrifying. Someone must, because the horror and disgust is palpable in the culture and it was the entirety of my first impression. Everyone has a hot take. They're everywhere, just littering every single timeline I algorithmically participate in. I had to backtrack after watching to figure out which which bit people were horrified by exactly. Was it the bit where Oliver gulps up Felix's cummy bath water? Was it the bit where Oliver strips naked and fucks a hole into Felix's freshly dug grave? Was it the class dynamic? The class fraud? The twist at the end where Oliver was the criminal mastermind who had planned this all along. The allegory of it all. The cringe, the palpable horror, the shame and outrage bait that just permeates every scene. Can't tell. Still, 
even as I type. I don't think there's one single location for it. It's just a painful blush seeping out across the entire film, blood under the skin, widening capillaries, red rising up to the surface. Ah. That's why I got a kick out of it all. Embarrassment is hot. Sorry, I don't make the rules. Or I do. And I have decided that there's nothing sexier than embarrassment. And Saltburn kind of flies right past common garden variety embarrassment. Parts of it are legitimately kink-coded, genuine, authentic sexual degradation. Some people are into drinking cummy bath water, and good for them. Other parts have a side-on approach to a more abstract kind of degradation. In Oliver being so desperately keen, he basically begs Felix for friendship. In Venetia's masochism, in Farley's sneering disdain, in the way literally everyone in this film wants or needs so openly with no attempt at tidy discretion. Eroticism and depravity, disgust, degradation, embarrassment. These things all know each other. They are probably friends. They probably spit in each other's mouths in a fun way. Maybe it's because I'm writing this review slap bang in the middle of ovulation week, but Saltburn handles sex like this inescapable, invisible thing. It is explicit, unspoken, under the table in every room, an overcurrent in every scene. In the dialogue, the delivery, the way the characters position themselves in relation to each other, it's outrageous in the way it just shamelessly simmers away in the filth of its own embarrassment. It's also palpable and pleading because sex is a kind of tool, a proxy for power or violence or something less abstract, the grounded corporeal reality of wanting to have or be had. Then the film gets highbrow, literary and referential, a minefield or a gold mine, depending on how you feel about all those citations. It is Brideshead Revisited, undergraduate aristocrat invites his friend from Oxford back to his family's insane castle for the summer, homoerotic undertones. It is the talented Mr Ripley, hustler, infiltrates the inner circle of charismatic playboy, becomes obsessed with him and then murders him, illegitimately scams his way into Playboy's inheritance by becoming him. It is Rebecca, potentially haunted country estate, mystery, murder, jealousy and menacing servants. It is very much Wuthering Heights, obsessive toxic relationship. Heathcliff begs Kathy to haunt him forever, digs her body up for a secret weird purpose. It is Pasolini's Teorema, Teorema? I don't know how to say that, sorry. Mysterious stranger slash visitor fucks his way through a wealthy family, changing them, their lives, their trajectories forever. Horror, the gothic tradition, romanticism in a way too. In the macabre gothic bodiliness. What? Oh my God, that sentence is so confusing. In the macabre gothic bodiliness, it is also revivalist, like... The medieval wounds of Christ, animal body close to nature. Medieval in a feudal sense too. Benevolent Lord takes pity on his subject, the lowly serf. Hot. I say highbrow and what I mean is knowing. It's a film that's contextually aware that the categories it sits in are expansive and rich. And is willing to use that richness for fun. It mixes and matches, churns out a third, worse, weirder thing. Back to embarrassment. I guess the horrifying thing about Saltburn is that it indulges something ugly for the sake of a sick, secret satisfaction. That sick, secret satisfaction isn't really or properly horrifying. It's just... niche. No shaming, etc. But it does make me think about what specific itch that satisfaction is scratching. I've been very coy about class, don't you think? I've barely mentioned it up until now. If you ask literally anyone else, they'll tell you that this film is mainly about class. That class is the entire container around this film. Saltburn definitely contains an itchy kind of class anxiety. The embarrassment of talking about class from any position. 
if I was a scholar, I'd look at it through a Marxist lens and say, hmm, fuck anxiety. This film is all about fear. That's the source of the horror, disgust and embarrassment. Perhaps Saltburn dares to speak aloud the great aristocratic fear that the wealth, resources and power that the upper classes have stolen and hoarded away will one day be snatched back from them by a pitchfork-wielding crowd of the lumpen proletarian masses. Or worse, by the sneaky, snaky, upwardly aspirational middle classes, the bourgeois climbers who always grasp for more and refuse to know their place. I scholarly self, would think long and hard about how that aristocratic fear is similar to the fear of white replacement, how those fears are founded in the belief that after transgression, reprisal is inevitable. I'd say something astute about how theft is a kind of fundamental and basic principle underlining both feudalism and its successor, capitalism, from enclosure of the commons to the exploitation inherent in wage labour, so it makes sense to fear theft in whatever system succeeds capitalism. I'd say that it's interesting this film came from a director like Emerald Fennell, who is so posh her 18th birthday was covered in Tatler. But also, of course it did. Gabrielle's scholarly self would probably reply that it's analytically interesting that she chose to make Ollie from Merseyside a place where all the liars supposedly live, according to Thatcherian logic. My actual hot take, if you absolutely demand one from me, is I think class was weirdly circumstantial, kind of peripheral. I mean... I would say that, wouldn't I? I'm middle class, the most embarrassing and embarrassed position on the great social pyramid. The middle classes are too embarrassed to talk about class in any interesting, insightful or meaningful way. Even talking about that embarrassment gets sticky. But embarrassment aside, class itself was not what I found myself interested in. Like, not on its own. In Saltburn, I think class was a setting, mood music or rolling backdrop. It was almost the least interesting bit. I was mostly excited by where it all went from there to this quite sexually weird space of violence and impulse and cruelty and pleasure. The exhibitionism and voyeurism of it all, where Felix wants Oliver's adoration and Oliver wants Felix's anything and everything. I was excited by the sick pleasure I took in the story's trajectory the happy ending, excited by my own perverse excitement. Back when I was anorexic, I wrote a short story about a girl who wakes up in a post-apocalyptic wasteland where she's the only person left alive. In her perfect solitude, she hallucinates the ghost of Timothy Chalamet and together they ransack a patisserie on the top floor of Selfridges. Again, a minefield or a gold mine, depending on how you feel about psychoanalyzing short story authors. What stories do we tell ourselves when we stumble upon a story that we find a sick little pleasure in? What does that pleasure say about the culture and the world we live in? Because it says something. If you ask me, Saltburn is a kind of fantasy, a daydream of a film. It's set in a world where the rich, the posh, the aristocratic and generationally powerful are a class of people who are actually quite weak and gullible. They're silly. Easily fucked over if you're willing to get down and dirty for it. Saltburn says, if the rich want you to be their poor little pet, then you can be so good. You can turn over and show them your very soft belly and you like them so much, maybe you'll let them rub it. Would they like to see a trick? And another trick? And another? That's when you can attack. When their defences are down. It's a fantasy of the tables turning. Of power shifting from one end of the great social pyramid to the other. Of roles reversing. That's why it's hot. Because that's fucking universally hot. It's very sexy and normal. And not at all disturbing or horrifying. It's not even remarkable. Saltburn is just erotic fiction.
and that's your review. <laughs> As I've read that out now, like, it's been a day or so. Yeah, I finished this on Friday. Um, so it's been, like, a day since I've last seen this. <laughs> and I'm like, do I still think that after 24 hours away from it? Um, I'm going to say yes. I think... I think I do think that Saltburn is just erotic fiction. <laughs> um, you know, like the, the, the gross, horrifying bits that everyone was so grossed and freaked out by, like the cummy bath water, like fucking the grave. I think that's fine. <laughs> like, you know, people are into all kinds of shit, you know? Um, so it's there's a real lack of outrage there for me. Um However, I think I've been, yeah, I've glossed over the subject of class a little bit um, in compa- compared to some of the other think pieces. And I should probably take a minute to say that everything else I've read is kind of like basically bang on about it. Like there are some really good points. It's just ne- like the discourse is never going to settle in a position where like it's that open question is resolved, you know. Um, so... It's it's just all of the class dynamic, class fraud aspect of it, the class around the film, like the class shit around the film. It's all just, it, it's there, it's rich, but it's never, it's it's too all over the place. Everyone said everything there is to say about it. And I think it's not for me to say anything about it at all because lack of agency and all that, you know, other, other critics have made better points. Um, so... There's that. I think that's the only, yeah, that's the only PS I'll add after 24 hours away that, you know, take this review with a pinch of salt. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that's it. I would like to give you the emoji for this week's text, please. And please can I have the three little liquid droplets, the little blue liquid water droplets that are universally like an implicit thirsty emoji. Um, that or the tongue, actually, maybe in combo, tongue, three droplets on the Instagram, on the Twitter, on the Discord, please. Um, and that's all. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time and attention on a Sunday, as always. I hope you're good. I hope you have, uh, you've got like a nice little treat for yourself lined up this Sunday. Um, because yeah, beginning of the year still technically we all deserve a break we all deserve a little you know a little, little, little something something but um yeah that's it i will catch you next time i think gabrielle has got a review for you next sunday so business as usual back to the schedule um bye <laughs>